Okay, so um, let's make a painting from scratch. So when I um, created this texture, I actually created it with the idea of um, making an actual little illustration, and, um, and I had that in mind. So um, I basically wanted to put a little kid surfing on a wave, and um, this example is is going to be um, basically you know how to create a watercolor texture or object that actually becomes pretty much the main uh, focal point of or the main part of your illustration so kind of illustrating with watercolor but making modifications to it um, and so instead of um, um, using the watercolor textures as a background which you'll see in some of the other um, images this is actually using the watercolor texture to actually create um, an illustration so um, I made this wave right here, and this is what I had in mind for using, but I also uh, used, utilized this space because watercolor paper isn't cheap, and there's no sense in not making something that could be used later for something else, so um, I made that as well. However, I do not need this portion right here. So in this um, instance, um, uh, in this uh, document right here, I've got my watercolor texture right here. I've got the little kid on this layer, which I'll show you later. Um, and uh, I'm actually, I've got the the uh, wave over here, but I'm gonna throw that one away. I actually don't need that one. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm just gonna take this texture that I've already brought into Photoshop. Again, this is one of the ones that's in your downloads. And I'm gonna cut away the portion that I don't need so I'll just go ahead and do that now with the lasso. So I went and got the lasso tool. And I'm just using the mouse actually right now. I'm just clicking and dragging along here just to select the portion that I don't want. Hit backspace or delete. And oops, I was on the wrong layer. But it's locked, so it didn't do anything. Get on the right layer. And delete that. And then I am going to go ahead and separate that out because uh, I'm going to want to use this texture a few times to repeat. So I'm going to go ahead and go to channels. Uh, I'm going to control click the RGB. I'm going to get a new layer. Oops, I keep doing that. <laughs> get on the layer palette, get a new layer. Select inverse. And the more you do this, the more you'll just kind of commit it to memory. And then simply get the paint bucket, get black paint, and fill it in. And then I'm going to deselect with the lasso tool, throw away the, so basically I have it on the other layer, but I'm going to throw away the one that has the white behind it because I just don't need that anymore. Delete. Um, sometimes what I'll do is actually at this point, you know, go ahead and save your document because as you're making these commitments of throwing things away and changing things, um, if, you know, if you get a crash or if uh, your power goes out, you don't lose everything. Um, so anyway, um, now I've got it on that that layer. There's my there's my wave that I'm going to use, and so um, the next step is probably to to um, move it so that it's cropping out of my image area. So I want maybe something like this right there, maybe maybe even like that. Um, and then what you're going to notice is I've got this imperfection down here. And there's several things I could do there. I could I could darken it, um, but I could also maintain that texture with something like um, the clone stamp tool or tool. I'm going to make sure that um, this little thing right here is on all layers. Um, sometimes it'll come def defaulted on current layer. I want it on all layers because I'm not only going to sample. Um, this wave layer but I need the white underneath to make the um, clone so I'm gonna just basically hit alt I think it's the Apple key or the option key for Mac users click next to that area and then I can move that texture right over top and click and, and paste it on there and then I can do it again I'm gonna hold down alt click and move it over and paste it on there all, and you might find that you'll have to do this from time to time um, if you have imperfections that you need to um, uh, fix. So got that. And then um, 
I might actually just erase this out over here a little bit. Um, let me get the eraser over here. I'm going to make it smaller. And there we go. Oops. I just soften this because I've got that crazy edge there. And normally what I'd probably do is just um, crop this out, but just so it doesn't look weird right there. I think I'm going to get rid of that. And then I've got this little imperfection right here, and I might just soften that so it doesn't become as dominant. There's some stuff in here, a little bit of stuff out here I'm just going to clean up a little bit. You you definitely don't want to clean up your your organic. I mean, the whole reason we're doing this is to get that organic feeling. And one of the reasons why watercolors look so neat is because the pigment takes, you know, a long time. It's changing as it's drying. So it's doing things that are really out of your control. And it's that kind of balance between control and, and uncontrol that gives us these random little things that bleeds and, and things that are happening um, as it's drying that you just can't really, you, you wouldn't really think to actually make that. It's kind of and these happy accidents that happen. We want to keep those. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do, just so I don't mess things up, is I'm going to duplicate this wave layer and I'm going to turn one off and just kind of keep it there. I do that a lot just in case I um, degrade because I'm using a destructive process. I've every time I bring these textures in, I go ahead and rasterize them, which basically means um, that as I make changes, those changes are permanent, and I can't go back to the original file. Um, I have the original file saved on my computer, so I can always go back and get it there. But as far as the file that's in Photoshop, um, there are constructive um, processes where you leave the layer rasterized, and deconstructive um, processes. Um, that degrade the image, um, and so uh, that's why I made this second layer there. So I'm going to go ahead and change the color. So just the uh, hue saturation, colorize. We'll lighten that up a little bit, saturate it, and get a blue wave here. I want something dark at first, dark and kind of colorful, not too colorful. Um, I want to make this, I want to get this wave so that it uh, changes color and um, take advantage of some of those modifications. So just like this, this is kind of boring. We want to give it a little bit of dimension and some depth. So um, I'm going to take this other layer that I have and duplicate it again. You can duplicate it as many times as you want. Turn the bottom one off. Now I've got this new one. So you can see it's dark. Um, and I'm going to change the color on that one to a lighter blue, colorize, um, lighten it up a little bit, saturate it a little bit, maybe get it in this area, this zone here, and then I'm going to move it into place, but I'm going to shrink it down a little bit because I want to create um, kind of a another part of the wave, a softer part that's kind of down in. And I'm just going to reduce it down a little bit. Kind of pop it in there like that. And then I'm going to click the Move tool, hit Apply. And then I'm going to decrease the opacity on that wave so that it hangs back a little bit. Um, the color kind of went away a little more than I wanted, so I'm going to go back in there. Again, this is a this is a massaging kind of way of working, you kind of have to, you have to try things in, until they look right, you know, let's get a little more saturation there, a little more lightness, a little greener there like that, okay, um, so you can see that right there, and then I'm going to lighten that up a little bit more on the opacity, yeah, something like that. And then use the eraser and erase off that part of the wave that we don't want to see. So maybe get a little more opacity. I'm about 50 50 on the opacity and flow. I'm just going to come in here and erase that line out of there. 
Now, the worst thing that can happen is if you race too much, you might have to go back through that part of the process again. Um, at this point, I'd hit save, um, and then I want to do it again. But I think I'm going to copy this lighter part of the wave, duplicate that, and lighten it up so it's just kind of a ghost image back here. Lighten it up a lot more. Maybe even change the shape a little bit. Maybe even rotate it. The wave can't be totally the same, right? So there's all kinds of things that you can do. And then again, really lighten that up a lot back there. So it's just like there's mist and and maybe some um, some crashing of some wave that you're not seeing. Um, and so got that, and uh, and then. Um, I've got this little boy that I drew, um, and I, I used the pencil, the digital pencil um, that we talked about before in the video. Oops, wrong way. I'm just going to move him into a part of the wave that I think will work. Won't work. And uh, so then the the last part is maybe getting some spray, um, some some ocean spray or water that's coming up off of his board there. So. I've got another layer right here, or another texture, and then I'm just going to rotate it around till I find the right spot here, and I think what I'll do is make it a little smaller because I want that spray to be a little more focused. That looks like a pretty good piece of spray right there that I could use, and then you'll notice that uh, I haven't rasterized it yet. I like to get it the right size first before I rasterize it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now it's, I can use a destructive process. Um, and uh, so then the next step from here is going to be, um, let's see, what is, oh, I'm going to separate this off, right? I'm going to separate that off of there. So I've got this, this is actually on like a white piece of paper again. So let's go through that process and um, select the channels. Don't do that. Don't do it like I do it. I keep screwing that up. Go to layers, get a, a new layer, and then um, uh, select the inverse. Where's inverse? Gosh, I'm losing it. And then um, fill it with black. And then I can throw away this old layer here. Deselect. And I did something wrong. Did I do something wrong? No, because it's see-through. Man. <laughs> ah, sometimes this gets confusing. Okay, so I'm going to throw away what I don't want. And I don't want this stuff out here, so I'm just going to come through there and throw that away and let's throw even more away over here on this side I do a squiggly line so I just don't have a line running through an organic piece of material that I want to use so that if anything shows up it's not totally straight okay and then oh yeah okay, I'm sorry go to adjustments and then hue saturation colorize it change it to white so that just by moving that lightness it'll flip it over to white like that and then I can just kind of grab that and throw it in place and there's way too much of it so um, and the, as as it you know as it moves back from the little guy there it will dissipate so I'm going to erase some of that and just lighten it off as we move back away from him it's just so that splatter seems like it's kind of coming off of his board there and that's pretty much that. Um, there's all kinds of other little modifications to it. I'll show you the one that I had already done um, that I, maybe I spent a little bit more time on. See if it looks similar. So it's similar. I cropped in a little bit more and, and threw another little texture in there. Blended another little one in there. But uh, you get the picture. Oh, I know what I didn't do on this one. Let's, let's enhance the color a little bit. So this is something I'm going to do on all of them. Something that I love to do is to control the color and I do that at the end. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
I got a new layer and I'm going to fill that layer with black and then I'm going to go to color dodge and that will turn it clear you can still see that it's black in there but it is so that that layer is still there but you can't see it because of this setting of color dodge then I'm going to go and get my paintbrush I'm going to uncheck everything it's on the regular airbrush there and then I'm going to decrease the opacity and the flow to about 20 percent okay and then um, comes the fun part so I'm going to get I'm going to touch on the color there and I'm going to um, I want to I want to warm it up a little bit so maybe I'll get a green color and see how that looks and what that what this does with this paintbrush now is it's going to um, enhance the colors in there so just by rubbing on there and just by touching that there uh, wherever I touch it's going to change the color if I don't like it going to green I could go more blue oops let's see let's do that again I'm just stepping backwards with Control alt z if I get a, a warm color um, then that I can use that to enhance the shorts and the and the little boy's skin color but that'll tend to orange out the the um, the waves so if I want to make the waves look more blue I can get a blue color in there and come through here and add some blue to it and make it look more interesting color wise so that's why it's another reason why again you don't need to worry about the color that you're painting with in, in watercolor if you're making your own textures because you can always change that um, in the end and um, enhance it and I could I could crop this image as well that's that's what the other one was was you know I had cropped in to finish it out so that it looks more like this here and uh, that's about it okay so there's our first image using uh, the watercolor as the main part of the image